There is nothing that strikes fear into the heart of vintage computing enthusiasts quite like a click, click, click from deep within the guts of an old machine. Ugh. And once your decades old hard drive has clicked its last click, replacing them can be quite a hassle. SCSI machines have had a few fantastic options over the years like SCSI to SD and Blue SCSI and a few more. But with IDE, it's been a bit of a crapshoot until now, because this is a brand new open source IDE SSD created by none other than our friend DOS Dude One. And I have here one of the very first hand assembled by Colin himself. So today we're gonna give it a bit of a torture test, install it into the most obscure G3 PowerBook, and then install Rhapsody, Apple's most obscure operating system. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy installing weird obscure software on weird obscure hardware, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, so there's actually kind of a lot going on here. So let me slow down for a second and explain what we have here. This is a PowerBook G3 Kanga, Apple's very first G3 powered laptop. And it's quite obscure and kind of hard to find. You see, when Apple first came out with the G3 processor, they just kind of crammed it into an existing laptop. The 3400C, which was, yeah, this is literally the same computer with the older processor. And they called this thing the all new PowerBook G3. Well, this was November, 1997. And just five months later in March, they replaced it with this, the actual all new PowerBook G3, which was way more powerful than our Kanga here. So this weird short-lived footnote in Apple's history, which is actually a very significant computer, is quite hard to find these days. It's also technically the most powerful Apple hardware that can run the PowerPC version of Rhapsody 5.1, which is the precursor to the original Mac OS X server. Basically, it's OpenStep, the operating system that Apple bought from Next and that we did a video on not that long ago, with a light coating of Mac OS 8 theming and some interesting software. After version 5.1, Rhapsody was rebranded as Mac OS X Server. And in fact, Rhapsody is still in the DNA of modern Mac OS all these decades later. So it would be really cool to have the last true version of Apple Rhapsody OS on the first true G3 PowerBook and to do it using the best possible IDE hard drive replacement, our hand-built SSD from DOS Dude One. Now, before we go and do all of this, we're gonna have to address a problem that's popped up on this Kanga since the last time I powered it on. Well, that ain't right. But let's procrastinate that for a bit and take a closer look at this magical SSD. And you know, this PCB is really nicely printed. I absolutely love this blue color and the super high quality feel probably because this was printed using the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. Not only do they offer high quality PCB prototyping and production, but they also offer on-site PCB assembly, and they can source some of the components with their turnkey service. This particular drive was assembled by hand, but you could get most of the components sourced and assembled right at the PCBWay facility. So it could land on your doorstep just about ready to go. It's really amazing the things we can do these days with professional PCB fabrication houses like PCBWay. So if you have any PCB 3D printing fabrication or prototyping needs, I hope you give PCBWay.com a try. So this unassuming looking little board here is based on a Silicon Motion SM2236 controller, which wrangles these four NAND chips here. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Just uh, some surface mount components, and this was designed by DOS Dude one who helpfully made this open source, which I will, of course, link to the GitHub down below, as well as the videos that he made putting this thing together and explaining more details on it. So definitely check those out below. But yeah, it is amazing to have this really compact IDE hard drive replacement. 
no more funky weird adapters and random CF cards and SD cards and worrying about the quality of those components that all get made in random factories with no name. We now have a real engineered hard drive for IDE based systems. So thank you so much, Colin, for developing this thing. All right, so I haven't taken one of these apart in quite a while, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Of course, they're star screws. I'm definitely not the first person inside here. Well, the memory was loose. And look, somebody actually very helpfully hacked in a more modern PRAM battery. And here's the connector for the screen, which uh, wasn't loose. So I'm a little concerned. Well, wow, some of these connectors are quite fragile. <laughs> Well, let's just reseat this and see if that fixes the screen issue. No. Maybe the problem is inside the display itself. Okay, so I swiped out the known working screen from the 3400. Sorry, Mike. And we'll use that just to rule out if it's the motherboard having the issue or if it really is the screen. Uh, yeah, this screen works fine. Well, that's good. Uh, let's take apart the Kanga's screen to see if we can fix it. And if not, we'll just use the screen from the 3400. You have to be kind of careful pulling these screens apart because these little badges cover screws and they just kind of snap in place. And especially the one that says PowerBook G3, I don't want to damage. All right, I have this all the way apart down to the internal connector here which didn't seem loose. All right, let's see if our efforts were worth it. Sound still works. Nope. I suspect that the ancient flex cable is damaged. So I'll have to source another one of those, but in the meantime, we will set this up with the screen from the 3400 since it is the identical part. Okay, now before I put the keyboard back on here, I've burned a copy of Rhapsody 5.1 and I wanna make sure that both the screen works normally and that this CD-ROM drive can actually read this burned CD. And then we'll toss in DOS Dude's drive and install Rhapsody on this thing. How cool is that? I mean, just imagine being back in the 90s and installing Rhapsody on your old Apple laptop and seeing this whole new Unixy world and wondering if this is the real life or if this is just some kind of fantasy. Easy come, easy go. Hey, hey, no, none of that. Get out of here. Anyway, let's give this a try. All right, and the big question can we see the Rhapsody? There it is, Rhapsody DR2. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, so real quick, it's probably smart to hook Collins drive up to my PowerBook G4 here, just to make sure it works and it's been initialized. Probably should have done that some time ago, but yeah. This is just an IDE to USB adapter. All right. The disk you inserted was not readable by this computer. So that means that this disk 
was initialized and it is not formatted. So I'm gonna click ignore and then we're just going to toss this in the Kanga and see if we can format it there with the Rhapsody installer. All right, here's our hard drive, which for some reason has two different types of screws holding it in. And there is our horrible Western Digital 120 gig, which I guess for the time wasn't that horrible. And certainly is in stock, which explains the random screws. Okay, and the original drive didn't have any master setting, so I'm just gonna take the jumper off. And this drive is keyed, helpfully. And through the cunning use of double-sided tape, we are mounted. Okay, so I'm not gonna put this all the way back together yet in case I have to pull this hard drive out again for some reason. So I'm gonna do the install with an external keyboard and mouse, and I'm gonna use the most appropriate set I have, a Next ADB keyboard and a Super Mac ADB mouse. Hey, it's booting! <laughs> it's alive! The desktop folder on the startup disk could not be created. Try unlocking the disk. What? Okay, so Mac OS 9.1 booted up just fine. Let's see if I can set up the hard drive from here. Uh, it doesn't see it. Huh. Oh sweet, I set the master jumper and now it sees it, 127 gigabyte SSD. All right, this is the 9.1 CD. Let me put the Rhapsody CD back in and see if that can also now see the drive. Now we're still getting that error about unlocking the disc. Well, hello from one day later. This is actually the day when these videos normally come out. Although for you, it's actually the day after these videos normally come out because of timey wimey stuff. Anyway, I decided to postpone the release of the video because I just couldn't leave well enough alone. I got Rhapsody installed and booting on the PowerBook and that's really great. But the installer for Rhapsody DR2 on PowerPC is broken. Specifically, the install CD image is broken and doesn't boot on PowerPC Max. So I did what any sane person would do and uh, I fixed it. It was actually pretty simple to do. I just had to take apart the ISO image and add a directory to it so that the macOS partition on the installer could actually boot. And yeah, now it works just fine. And I tested it out by doing a brand new install on the Kanga. And yeah, it works just like it should. So the images that are floating around on the internet for Rhapsody, DR2, PowerPC, those don't work. And I have uploaded my fixed image to Macintosh Garden and the repository. I'll link both of those down in the description below. And hopefully this will help the one or two people per year who try to install Rhapsody DR2 onto a PowerPC Mac. Anyway, now that we have it installed and running, Let's take a look at Rhapsody DR2 PowerPC. Here we are at the initial Rhapsody setup assistant from the fresh install. And I have no idea what kinds of questions it's going to ask, although I assume it's gonna be similar to Mac OS. Although look, that's actually a next step icon there. All right, I did all of the initial settings and uh, hopefully the network settings worked. And I set up a local user account, which is pretty neat to see on Mac OS. This is actually the same 
login screen as next step and open step, which is pretty cool. Also, for some reason, I only have caps. <laughs> oh, yes. Look at this. We have Apple Rhapsody running on here. Oh, that's amazing. We have all the icons from next step. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, the next step file manager. <laughs> we have all these default apps which go all the way back to next step. Amazing. That has boink out. Excellent. Oh my god, it's so loud. <laughs> and the volume button doesn't work. <laughs> okay, okay, let's get out of here. Okay, well, as I was playing around it froze, so I restarted it, and uh, yeah, now it's been stuck on starting Rhapsody for quite a while. Not totally convinced it's going to start. Oh, there it goes. And we can, of course, see the Unixy underpinnings of Rhapsody, which is quite cool to see a Unix terminal open up in a Mac OS 8 themed window. And I'd like to get the OmniWeb web browser going on here. Okay, so using the magic of FTP from my MacBook Pro, I've sent over some files and uh, we can actually change this view to look more like a Mac. Yeah, look at that. And the first thing I need is uh, the G3 cache control, which is a patch that Apple made to allow Rhapsody to use the G3 processor's cache, which Rhapsody was released before the G3 ever was, and this version of Rhapsody by default has no idea what a G3 processor is. All right, well, I can't seem to figure out how to get OmniWeb to actually launch. I think I'm supposed to run this dot .package as an installer, but I don't know. Anyway, now that we've seen some of the cool stuff about Rhapsody, let's talk about some of the downsides. So while it was a ton of fun and uh, aggravation, getting Rhapsody to run on this PowerBook G3 Kanga, it's about the worst possible operating system to put onto a laptop. I mean, in general, Rhapsody was never meant for end users to just use as a daily driver operating system, although, some people sure did, and they sure loved it, and there are still sites out there today of people who really love Rhapsody. But, I mean, aside from it being absolutely ancient and not updated, and we had to fix the installer ourselves, it's lacking a ton of features, especially on laptops. I mean, there is no sleep. It's either on or it's off. None of these buttons worked for the brightness or the volume, and it's currently at max volume. Don't think I can change that. I'm pretty sure I can't use any PCMCIA cards with this. I'm pretty sure it has to be plugged into Ethernet for it to go online. But other than that, it's awesome. I hope you had as much fun watching me suffer through this install as I had suffering through this install. But I'm really excited that we actually got it done. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. Thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Camila Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Greg from Hrut K Mods, Justin Hemmings, Justin Reed, Megahertz Models, Michael Mulhern, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, Sutek, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters who helped to make these videos possible.